Good afternoon. It is 95 degrees in the Rose City on this Tuesday, the 4th of July. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm David Molko. Get set for it to stay warm right through fireworks time. Plus tomorrow, the heat in some spots could climb even higher. We're going to check in with Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino in just a few minutes. But first, let's get to an update out of Skamania County and the to track the Tunnel 5 fire. This initially sparked early Sunday west of White Salmon, Washington, near the community of Underwood. That is essentially just across the Columbia from Hood River there. A stretch of State Route 14 on the Washington side remains closed at this hour. Officials say several homes have been lost to the flames, though it does not appear that number has increased, fortunately, in the last 24 hours. Keep in mind, though, Level 3 Go Now evacuations remain in effect for a two-mile radius around that fire. So let's get right to Blair Best on the Oregon side of the river this evening. Blair, what are you seeing? How's the wind looking right now? David, the wind isn't a major concern today, which is a good thing. So far, fire crews have contained 5% of this fire, which started on Sunday. Now, we're a few miles west from Hood River, and we can see the smoke from this fire that's burning along these ridges right down to the water. Now, what you're seeing right now is called the Tunnel 5, and that's where a majority of the firefighting efforts have been focused today. On Tuesday, fire crews continue to attack the flames from the air. Water tankers focus on this section of the gorge, given its steep terrain that's difficult to navigate on foot. There's also a lot of complexity with the railroad corridor, the state highway, power lines, uh, the helicopters and the water tankers are dipping from the river. And parts of the river are filled with people like John Bennett enjoying the holiday. It's uh, quite the contrast. Uh, it's uh, just appreciate those guys and what they're doing. Nearly 200 firefighters are working and more are on the way. As of Tuesday, the fire stayed roughly at 533 acres and was 5% contained. A roughly 10 mile stretch of Highway 14 is still closed. I know that they're continuing to work on the dozer line on the eastern edge of the fire, working to corral it a little better. And on the western edge, again, it's very steep terrain, but we're scouting to look for possible containment lines there. This is just one of those things where I go, all right, this is life in the gorge. Officials estimate 10 buildings have been destroyed. Justin Schultz, who lives about five miles from the blaze, hopes his isn't next. I don't want to lose my home. <laughs> I mean, if, if you live in the gorge, one of the key things out here is, you know, the greenness of this, right, the beauty here. So it's unfortunate that this is happening. As of Tuesday, evacuation orders have been lifted in Klickitat County. Level 3 remains in parts of Skamania County, though fire crews warn that can quickly change as they fight to stop it from spreading. So what they're doing, the work, all that stuff, the danger that they're facing, I mean, it's much appreciated. That appreciation was echoed by many out here at the Gorge today, and fire crews say you can do your part by prioritizing fire safety tonight, given it's the 4th of July. David? Blair Best outside Hood River. Thank you, Blair. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino now. Matt, happy 4th to you. Lots to talk about this evening. Thanks, David. Absolutely. You know, uh, some great uh, visuals there in Blair's live shot. You can see the smoke wasn't getting pushed hard to the west or hard to the east. That is going to change tomorrow afternoon, but it's good news right now in that the winds are super light. You can see the water is pretty much flat as well, so that gives firefighters a fighting chance because when the wind is pushing on it really strongly, it really makes it difficult. This is our live shot from our sky cam of the Dalles, about 20 miles west of Hood River, or sorry, east of Hood River, of course, uh, in the gorge, and you can see the haze here, and you have haze over the Portland area too, but most of this in Portland is from Canadian wildfires that transported on down from north to south. There is some haze in the gorge from that tunnel five fire that moved over yesterday. 97, only 11% humidity. Very similar conditions in Hood River right now. That super dry air is not good, of course. That just allows the fire to keep growing. Now, we've got fire weather warnings out from east of Seattle down to southern Oregon here. Interestingly enough, though, if you look at the gorge, it's only on the Washington side of the gorge. And in fact, Hood River and it goes just about uh, it begins just west of Underwood. Basically the fire weather warning. That's because that's where the fuels are the driest fuels, meaning grass, shrub, trees, and because this is where the winds are really going to begin to pick up tomorrow afternoon. So again, pretty good conditions overnight tonight and tomorrow morning for fighting that fire. We'll have light winds. Humidity will be low. Can't do anything about that, of course. 
And then tomorrow in the morning, easterly winds that are light, but in the afternoon, strong west winds kick in. Then it's going to get difficult tomorrow night into Thursday and Friday. Even though it gets a little cooler, humidity comes up a bit. The wind is going to be a major issue pushing that fire from west to east, which is opposite of what it's been doing recently. Of course, coming up, David, we'll talk more about the 4th of July forecast that we've got going on for you. Uh, and and of course, uh, again, be very careful. They didn't can throw a spark. We already have fires burning. We don't need more. David can't say it enough. Thank you, Matt. This hot, dry weather also means burn bans are in effect. New burn bans in Marion County. The Fire Defense Board has issued a ban on all fires effective immediately. Again, Marion County. This includes all agricultural and slash burns, plus all recreational fires and backyard burns. The one exception cooking with a propane or charcoal grill officials say they are ready to issue fines and citations, and this ban will not be lifted until the fire danger drops. In Cowlitz County, a ban on all, all outdoor burning takes effect tonight at midnight. This includes brush and yard debris piles, land clearing and forest undergrowth burns. Any existing permits will also be rescinded. Small recreational fires are still OK on private property as long as they are contained within a ringed burn pit. This ban runs at least until the end of September. Well, new at five, an armed attempted robbery in Northeast Portland foiled when a store clerk and customers fought back. Police say the suspect walked into a 7-Eleven at Northeast Sandy in 82nd just before 1 a.m. Sunday and then pulled out a revolver. That is when customers tackled the suspect and pinned him to the ground. You see a little of the aftermath here. One shot was fired. Police say nobody was hit. Customers held the suspect bleeding on the ground until authorities arrived. Police have now identified him as 40 year old Daniel Jones. He has also been charged with another 7 Eleven robbery. This one Saturday night on Southeast 92nd. The gun was reported stolen out of Washington back in 1996. We have new information this evening in what appears to be a case of somebody deliberately targeting homeless people in Northeast Portland and a sequence of events left a 26 year old dead for the first time since that hit and run crash last Thursday. We are hearing from the victim's father. Mike Benner explains why authorities are looking for not just one vehicle, but two. Right in, right there, uh, up to the motorcycle and back almost to your car. Travis Filmley Sr. points out a skid mark from the hit and run crash that killed his son, Travis Filmley II. Oh man, he was a great kid. Uh, everyone loved him. Uh, he had no enemies. Certainly not amongst the campers along Northeast 33rd Drive in Northeast Portland. Yeah. Uh, the Filmleys are homeless and have been living here for the last two months. In fact, this is where they were last Thursday night when there was a loud explosion. And I could feel the concussive wave right here and I could see the explosion right here above this trailer. At the same time, this truck went flying by at about 50, 60 miles an hour, you know. So Authorities say somebody was driving around in a lifted white pickup truck throwing fireworks out the window. The Filmleys were yes. frustrated and scared, so the younger Filmley took matters into his own hands, his father tells us. He tried throwing a hammer at the truck, but missed. And when he stepped into the road to retrieve the hammer, a car chasing after the truck hit him. He flew and he landed, and I was running to him, and, and, and I've seen people die. I'm former military, you know, decorated military and all that, and, and I've seen it, and I worked in hospitals and things, and I, and I knew he was dead instantly, but Filmley Sr. says the driver who hit his son, who may be homeless herself, returned and apologized, yeah. but then left and has not been seen since. Filmley Sr. says he's not necessarily angry with her. You can't blame everyone, but uh, there's definitely one person that knew what they were doing ahead of time and did it purposely, and it was the truck driver. Problem is that truck and its driver have not been seen since the crash either. And it's not sitting well with Filmley Sr., who wants justice for his son. Oh, my God. He was everything to me. I Travis mean, Filmley Sr. says he won't rest until somebody's held accountable for his son's death. He didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve it. I've got karma coming. I may have deserved some, some pain in life, but this kid was innocent. Detectives, of course, are looking for the car and driver who hit Travis. They're also looking for that pickup truck and the people inside who were tossing out fireworks. If you have any information about this case, you're urged to pick up the phone and call the Portland Police Bureau. Travis's dad would greatly appreciate it. Reporting in Northeast Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News.
Such a tragedy there. Athletes are taking over Portland for the next few days with the National Veterans Wheelchair Games. More than 400 from all over the country will compete for medals in 23 different events. Everything from wheelchair rugby to shooting and even pickleball. That is a new event this year. It is the 42nd edition of the Games and something participants say they look forward to year after year. All these people are like my cousins, uncles, brothers, you know, so it's a big family and I'm glad it's like a reunion every year, a family reunion. It's great. And it gives you a chance to play with people who look like you in a lot of ways. Well, most of the events are being held at the Oregon Convention Center. The games run through July 9th. Spectators are more than welcome. They are encouraged to support the athletes and take in all the action.